Hey there, Internet. Time for another video. And by the way, did you notice there's a little, you know, things have changed look just a little bit more around here? It's because my main hard drive that, amongst other things, had all of the <laughs> current um, graphical material I was using for the recording the videos had a mechanical failure. It's in getting data recovery. Fingers crossed they will have all of my data retrieved. I usually back up my, I'm usually really good but I, it's a complicated, long story. I did, I did not have the last six months of stuff back, backed up yet. In fact, I did, but only on the backup. I wasn't, I was using it as a main drive, which it shouldn't really do. I was doing stuff. I had to upgrade my computer. The whole process got uh, put on delay, and I don't know. It's complicated. Big mistake. Normally, don't make a this mistake. I made it finally. It happens to everybody. <sighs> I'm trying to just breathe. It's going to be expensive, though. It's like a grand. Hey, you know, this would be a great time to join my Patreon if, if, if 10 of you joined Patreon as student patrons this month and stuck around for the next 10 months. That would pay for my hard drive. It would. I've always thought that it would, what I would really like is for about... Is it too much to ask? 500 people sign up for a $2 a month Patreon subscription and get to read all my comics and get all my posts in their inbox and enjoy stuff and help me make more comics. Because if I had that much Patreon supporters every month, I could pretty much just do this. I could only just do this. Like, not YouTube even. Just making comics and a little bit of teaching. And I could teach just the people on Patreon and nobody else. That would be... That would be like a dream, man. Yeah. So go pledge on Patreon, patreon.com slash salgood, and two bucks, ten bucks to be a student, uh, five dollars, and I do your social media portrait. Check it out. I'm going to answer a student's question with a little short video. This is Making Comics at Sin Studio. I'm currently teaching, and I was asked in class about what's the, the best panel shape for action in a comic. And I answered it in class, but I feel like because I was thinking up on the a moment it meandered, and I could give a more concise answer. So I'm going to make a short video about what's the best panel shape for action. So there are a lot of panel shapes. Some panels are just square. I'm just approximating right now. This is not a perfect square. But I freehand draw most of my panels anyway, so that's kind of normal. Uh, I do a lot of panels that are more rectangular but squarish. And I do a lot of vertical panels, and I do a lot of long horizontal panels. And then I do some things that are a little more complicated, but let's just start with these. Which of these panels is the best for action? It's the wrong question, because any panel could be great for action. The question is, what's the best panel composition to use for action? And that, that I can answer. In any of these panels, the thing that's going to work the best is... Um, strong diagonals and intersecting and intertwined forms. For a really quick idea of what I'm talking about, just Google Kirby spreads or Jack Kirby two-page spreads. And you'll see he did a whole lot of these. Jack Kirby was an, a, a, an epic comic artist. Um, who I only really learned to appreciate as I got older, to be honest. Uh, and his compositions have a crazy amount of energy in them, and a lot of it has to do with using strong diagonals and intersecting complex forms. So diagonals are the easiest thing. We'll come into that right away. Uh, we, can, we can look at that right away. If you think of the, gr of the ground, it's horizontal. And so I put a little hill in there inadvertently, but generally speaking, it feels pretty flat, and that feels pretty static because it's stable, because it's flat in the ground. It's flat. That's fine, but you you uh, 
we, we live in this world that has gravity in it as a thing, right? So the reality is as soon as you put a diagonal into something, our brain immediately assumes that things will roll downhill, you know? That that becomes the uh, almost explicit way we read the scene. So there is automatically this association with a strong diagonal or even a subtle diagonal as having energy or potential for action. So this one long and wide with just a gentle hill, it still feels like something's happening. And so if I have a figure running up that hill, it feels like something pretty potentially actiony. In fact, if I put another foot here, I've just created the opening shot of a chase scene, right? It's got lots of potential, even though the shot itself is a wide kind of cinematic moment and it's not a fight scene. It still feels like there's energy and a sense of movement and action. I just made this up on the fly, just playing with the diagonal. Um, the diagonal doesn't have to be a, a landscape, though. It can be the, the movement of a character. So let's do a, a classic trope. The flying man. So there's our figure. We've got the gesture of the hips, the feet. Actually got a bit of a curve into this flying man. In fact, it could be a flying woman. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to do the flying mannequin. I'm not going to try to gender it. <laughs> and actually, you see frequently capes, and that can help sell the directionality. This is something like flying up towards us, you know? There's, there's lots of potential for action there. So if you want action in the sense of conflict, then we want clashing forms, not just diagonals, but intersecting and clashing forms. So let's say we have a couple of boxers. have that character's head and I think for the work that should be underneath there we go this one's cutting in. They've left themselves open. This sh shoulder is back, the one closest to us, so the hip goes forward. Right? So they're intersecting and colliding, but I can make that feel even more dynamic by trying to find ways to There we go. Make them kind of even get more tangled or interlocked. Here's another example. We have a figure here. figure here so their force of their movement is going into this this arch right so you're literally getting that a bending form with a force going into it those are intersecting forms but then also 
if I go like that, the more I can exaggerate. There we go. The angle into. Let's see. I want to move this guy up. Uh, yeah, there we go. More like there. So let's grab this one again. Shift them into the shot. And let's play with that diagonal. There we go. So this posing, changing, also sort of implies now that we're looking down from above. We've got a diagonal going through the panel. There we go. That diagonal. And I'm implying that the ground is sort of doing this kind of thing. If you see it, and we're looking down from above. So they've got all sorts of interesting angle, angles and dynamic energy happening. And again, that's the real secret to creating lots of action and energy in your panel compositions is strong diagonals. It could be a Dutch angle or an, a down shot or an up shot. Um, it can be movement through the panels, and so diagonal movement of objects through the panels, or even just the land being at an angle. Uh, and it could be the angles we have in the figures and kind of creating interesting uh, diagonals and curves. And then having those figures interact and intersect and collide with each other in interesting dynamic ways that imply force and energy also gives you a lot more energy. So when you're talking about fight sequences or dance sequences, I just chose fights because they were kind of obvious. And I think that's where the, the student was going with their question. Um, but it could be for many situations. Um, and that is the real secret. The panel shape isn't really important. But one last note on that. There are some panel shapes that kind of have the principles of what I just talked about built in. For example, if this is my page, this is kind of an unusual shape page, and I do a panel like this, right? Then some of what I just talked about is implicit in the shape of the panel itself. So I could have, uh, let's do a roundhouse kick going this direction. And we can have hitting somebody whack right in the ear so hip to way up Nice angle on pelvis to shoulders, nice curve. And I'm going to have the person kind of driving force down with their arms. Like that to a foreground figure here. Let's use a different color. That works better. There we go. So we can see that figure proper. Whack. Right? So there's energy in this, but also this angle cut on the frame helps sell and focus the attention of the action. And we can then use this angle here to have. Uh, I actually don't want to be right next to it. Let's do that. Yeah, there we go. That makes more sense, and I can kind of play with echoing the shape. Shoulders up. Knives out. like that, right? Lots of interesting action. Uh, there's some things happening with the figures 
that are interesting to look at potentially, but this strong diagonal in the page design, in the landscape, in the furniture of the architecture of the page, right away helps sell some of the dynamic energy that you want. So that is how to do, or how to design, compose action scenes and uh, use a lot of, get a lot of energy and dynamic energy into the posing. Okay, good. Hope that helps. Um, Patreon.com slash Salgood. $10 a month to be a student and uh, $2 a month just to read my comics. I hope you enjoyed this little lesson and I'll see you around the internets. Uh, back up your data. Do it now. It's really important.